When most of us hear the word mummies, our minds often wander to the grand tombs of ancient Egypt filled with artificially preserved bodies wrapped in linen. But there exists another kind of mummy. A haunting tableau of death and industry lies frozen in time within the depths of an ancient salt mine in Iran known as the Chehrabad Mine. Here, miners became victims and were preserved in a manner both macabre and extraordinary. Known simply as the salt men, these are not kings and priests, but ordinary laborers who met an untimely end, preserved by the very salt that was a source of their livelihoods. Recent archaeological efforts have brought us closer than ever to solving the secrets of these important yet lesser-known mummies. The importance of salt in antiquity cannot be overstated. It was not only vital for the preservation of food, but also played a significant role in religious rituals, trade, and even the maintenance of empires. The Achaemenid dynasty, which lasted from 550 to 330 BC, was one of the first and greatest empires to arise in the region, spanning from Egypt to the Indus Valley and controlling vast stretches of territory, including parts of modern-day Iran. During this period, the Cherubad mine was an imperial asset and a critical site where the empire extracted and possibly taxed this commodity. The mine appears to have been a bustling site of activity until a series of catastrophic events struck at various times throughout history. It was these tragedies that sealed the fate of the mine and its workers. The mine collapsed and entombed the miners in a mass of salt and rubble. The collapse's aftermath preserved the bodies in exquisite detail, as the salt's hygroscopic properties effectively dehydrated the bodies and prevented decay, halting the natural process of decomposition. What remains are mummies locked in their final moments. The story of the saltmen began in the winter of 1993, when miners, while digging in the ancient tunnels of the Cherubad salt mine, made a startling discovery. Within a tunnel stretching 45 meters in length, they found a body, not merely skeletal remains, but a man with long hair and a beard, surprisingly well-preserved. This discovery was unlike anything they had encountered before. The salt, which had gradually encased the body over centuries, had preserved not just the flesh, but also many of the artifacts that had accompanied him in death. Alongside the remains of the man, archaeologists found a collection of items that revealed more about his life and work which included a lower leg encased in a leather boot, three iron knives, parts of woolen trousers, a silver needle, a sling, pieces of leather rope, a grindstone, a walnut, pottery shards, patterned textile fragments, and several broken bones. This man, later known as Salt Man One, was not a pharaoh or nobleman, but an individual whose life was defined by manual labor and survival. But this discovery was only the beginning. Over the next few years, more remains were uncovered. In 2004, another salt miner unearthed a second body, which led to more extensive archaeological excavations. By 2010, a total of six individuals had been found in the salt mine, including a teenager and a woman. Most of these victims were caught in sudden violent mine collapses. International efforts soon converged on Cherubad. Collaborations between the Iranian Cultural Heritage News Agency, the German Mining Museum in Bochum, the University of Oxford, and the Swiss University of Zurich brought advanced techniques to bear on the mystery. Supported by Deutsche Forschungsgemeinschaft, DFG, and British funding, researchers set out to investigate the lives and deaths of these ancient miners. Carbon-14 dating of the bones and textiles showed that the individuals spanned several centuries. Three of the salt men were from the Parthian period, which lasted from 247 BC to 224 AD, and the Sassanid period, which extended from 224 AD to 651 AD. Other individuals dated back to the Achaemenid Empire, which lasted from 559 BC to 331 BC. These findings suggested that the mine had been in operation for a long period and had claimed multiple victims across different eras. The salt mine itself had acted as a natural preservative and kept the bodies and their belongings remarkably intact. The salt men provide a lot of information about the people who worked in the mines. For example, three-dimensional scans revealed signs of trauma on the remains of Salt Man 1, including fractures around the eye that likely resulted from a hard blow before death. This may have been caused by falling rocks or tools in the mines. Further examination of the body revealed more details about his status. A golden earring found on Salt Man 1 
indicated that he was possibly a person of rank or influence, suggesting that mining was not exclusively the work of the lower classes. This miner might have been of a higher social class, perhaps operating as a supervisor or a foreman. Further research into the Saltmans' lives extended into their health and diet. In another study, scientists found that one of the mummies, dated to around 2,200 years ago, had tapeworm eggs in his intestines. This discovery indicated that he had consumed raw or undercooked meat. This suggests that the miners might have survived on poor diets or may have worked long hours in the mines, leaving little time for them to prepare food properly. The artifacts discovered alongside the saltmen further enriched the narrative of their existence. Over 300 pieces of fabric were found, many of which retained their designs and dyes despite the passage of centuries. The patterns on these textiles were intricate. The clothing found on the bodies suggests that these were not random laborers, but individuals who took pride in their appearance and had access to crafted garments. The assortment of tools found with the saltmen, iron knives, leather boots, a silver needle, a sling, and other implements, suggests that these miners were not only laborers, but also resourceful individuals who carried out a variety of tasks essential to their survival. Other pieces of equipment found, including tools consistent with wedge-hewing techniques, suggest that mining during this period was a well-organized and sophisticated operation. Today, the head and left foot of Saltman I are on display at the National Museum of Iran in Tehran, while four other mummies are housed at the Archaeology Museum in Zanjan. The sixth body remains in place within the salt mine, left undisturbed as a silent guardian of this ancient industrial site. The whole mine itself, which had once been a bustling center of activity since ancient times, now serves as a silent monument to these individuals. The mining permit was canceled by the government in 2008, allowing the site to be preserved for historical and archaeological research. As researchers continue to study the remains, the saltmen of Cherubad provide an ever-deepening well of information about the lives of those who worked in the salt mines of ancient Persia. Their preserved forms tell of a world where life was a constant struggle against the elements and where the pursuit of prosperity came with the risk of sudden and violent death. Unlike the mummies of Egypt, who were prepared for the afterlife with meticulous care and opulence, the saltmen were preserved by nature's indifferent hand. They were ordinary people, caught in their daily labor, meeting their fate without warning. They reveal the realities of ancient mining, where men, women, and even the young risked their lives daily in the pursuit of salt, a resource as valuable as gold in their time. The salt that was once a source of livelihood turned into their eternal shroud, preserving them in the very act of their labor. Yet, in their silent, salt-preserved forms, they narrate a powerful story of resilience, danger, and the unyielding march of time. Each wrinkle and fracture in their bones speaks to the life they led and the sudden calamity that befell them. 